today I'm going to show you how to make current bread. Um, and there's a little more going on with this bread than with French country bread. Um, because along with flour and yeast and salt, you're going to need raisins, butter, and an egg. So the first thing, this will make one loaf of bread. And you can make it either in a loaf pan or just sort of reform on some kind of flat sheet pan. And the first thing you want to do is you want to take a cold stick of butter just out of the fridge. You don't want it to have softened at all. And you want to take a quarter cup of that, so half a stick or four tablespoons. And you want to cut it up really small. I cut it into tiny little cubes, but up to you. If you have a pastry cutter, um, then this might be a good chance to get that out. Because what you're going to want to do is blend the butter into the flour. But you can definitely do that. Talented people um, can magically do that with two knives, but it works just fine with your fingertips. So that's what I'll show you how to do today. So, Half a stick of butter, cut up into little pieces, plus, and start with about a cup of flour. And this recipe just calls for all purpose or bread flour, but if you want to use some whole wheat flour too. Go right ahead. Um, so it calls for a total of four cups of flour. I would recommend not starting with four cups of flour. Um, that tends to end badly. And then you have butter blended into extra flour and you have to find something to do with that. So what I'm doing is I'm sticking my hands into this bowl, my clean hands, and I'm just kind of pinching. I'm tossing the butter with the flour and then I'm just kind of squeezing the butter between my fingers and working it into tinier pieces. So generally the description people go for is you want it to be the consistency of cornmeal. So basically you just want the butter to go from the little pieces that you chop it into into even smaller pieces that are totally covered in flour. So it's all kind of one, one thing. And people will also, if you're done much baking, um, you might be thinking, oh, why isn't she using a pastry blender? You know, because your fingertips are warm, so they're sort of melting the butter um, as you do this, or at least softening it. And in an ideal world, you want really cold butter. But whatever, it works out just fine, and I find it a lot easier than trying to use a pastry cutter or knives. If you have a food processor, you could you could run this through the food processor. That might be the trick pretty well. Okay, I'm going to show you what this looks like. See how it's sort of rougher looking than plain flour would be? I've, you know, broken that butter and there's sort of chunks of butter and flour throughout. I'm going to add a little more flour. I'm switching over to wheat flour. I'm going to add about a cup of that. This is a half cup measuring cup, so that's why I'm doing it twice. I'll work that in. So that's two cups of flour and the butter. 
And the recipe says to go ahead and mix all four cups of flour at once, but I don't think that works very well, so I'm just going to start with this. I'm going to wash my hands. And now I'm going to add salt and sugar. So you should use a one teaspoon of salt, and this is a half teaspoon measuring cup, so that's why I'm doing twice. And two tablespoons of sugar. And you know, if you want to find all your measuring stuff before you get started, that's that's an option. So one tablespoon, two tablespoons. You can stir all that together. And you shouldn't see any huge lumps of butter. You should just see little ones. If you do see any bigger ones, you know, go in there and break that up. Show you what this looks like. So it's one cup of whole wheat flour and one cup of all purpose flour with uh, half a stick of butter, a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of sugar. Uh, this recipe also comes from the Great Moon Book of Bread. And again, I've made some changes that I think make it a little easier to make. So once you've got your flour mixed, you can sort of set that aside and get started on your yeast mixture. So you're going to want to get out your liquid measuring cups. Aha! And you're going to want three quarters cup warm water. I just use tap water, and when the water starts to feel warmer than lukewarm um, to, on my hands, then I'll pour it in here, and then I'll feel it again. So it shouldn't feel hot, um, it shouldn't hurt at all, but it should definitely feel warmer than room temperature. If it's too hot, it'll kill your yeast. If it's not hot enough, then your yeast won't start to grow very quickly. So, the recipe calls for two heaping teaspoons of yeast. And again, if you're not committed to baking and don't want to buy a jar of yeast, then you can buy little packets in the baking aisle of the grocery store. One packet is slightly more than two teaspoons of yeast, so one packet would be all you need for this recipe. I'm going to give it a quick stir. Try and get some of the yeast off that's sticking to my sink. And then I'm just going to let that sit for a few minutes. 